It is party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. We are in the Mothership Studio 22 right here in the middle, the heart of Blaze Studios. And we are flying into the nether regions of all things south of the border. It sounds fun, but it's not. Uh, Kayla is at the helm, flying us, taking us deep, deep into South Texas. We're going to talk about our recent trip down to the border. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, and the legendary Chris Cruz looks on. Uh, big announcement, folks. Big announcement. I have tears in my eyes. If you, if you look closely, you'll see the tears. I forget it. I'm crying on the inside. Candice is leaving the show. Candice is leaving the show. Is your microphone working over there? Are you, are you able to are you able to communicate? Are you able yeah. to repent and tell our listening and viewing audience how sorry you are for I know. letting them down? I'm so sorry. After two and a half I'm not years, I'm feeling the pain. After two and a half years, it was a long road, long journey. Yeah. So, for those of you who have followed us for a long time, you know that I like to take a lot of credit for the things that I do and do well. One thing is because of this show, Candace met her now husband, Mark, the puppet master. Is he that much of a perfectionist at home? Y'all have been married now a month. See, I don't think oh. he's that much of a perfectionist. Yeah. But, I mean, when it comes to a show for you, yeah. he wants to put the best product out there. So. All right. So, so because of me, she's married. Thank you. Um, she, she has a home to clean. Uh, Thank you. She's got, uh, she's got things to do, dishes to wash, sandwiches to make. And... Also, because of me, she's now going to work, can we say? Yes, yeah. Uh, as a producer for Megan Kelly. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Now you're going to be doing Megan's dishes. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I'm sad. Uh, I'm sad. But anyway. It's been a good, good journey. It has been a good journey. You're and welcome. I hope it ends with you in the governor's office. I, well, you know what? I have, don't, you don't try to butter me up now, Candace. Okay? <laughs> don't try. But. Tell me more words that flatter me. Oh, boy. Sitting in the hot seat, our good friend, Victor Avila. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Chad. Avila. Yes, sir. I always want to, I, I wish I could say things with an accent. <laughs> That's Vic pretty good. Avila. Victor Avila. Uh, former ICE agent, retired ICE agent. Uh, we were down on the border. We're going to get into that on what we experienced, what we saw firsthand, the people we talked to. Um, there's a lot to cover. And over at the pub, we've got my good buddy, Al Zito. Al Zito, <laughs> uh, businessman, pol political activist, extraordinaire, campaign manager for Chad Prather 2022. I'm Chad Prather, and I approve this effing message. And, of course, <laughs> Allison. Everybody knows Allison. We were all down at the border. And, uh, Candace, your people say hello. Um, they, they slipped a note through the fence and said, uh, make sure this gets into the hands of the queen of the Ethiopians. And so I'll pass that on to you later on. Oops, I forgot it. Uh, we saw some crazy stuff down there. We're going to get into all of that. Before we do, I want to remind everybody, uh, if you're in the Fort Worth area, I will be doing a campaign event tomorrow night, Thursday night, in uh, uh, Fort Worth, White Settlement at the Eagles Elks Lodge. I wanted to make it the Fraternal Order of Eagles, but yeah, the Elks Lodge over on White Settlement Road. Come hang out with us tomorrow night. Uh, and then we're going to be in Roswell, New Mexico on Saturday night at the Liberty. Uh, myself, the Ragamuffins, the bus will be rolling in. So get your tickets at watchchat.com. That's where all the fun stuff is. And also grab some of the fun gear over there and show your support. We appreciate that. Uh, it's crazy. I, I want to enjoy as much of America, Victor, as I can right now because I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to be able to enjoy America because we saw some crazy stuff. And didn't you feel that we're, uh, it's unrecognizable yeah. at certain points, especially in the Del Rio area, Valverde County, where it's unrecognizable because of the amount of people, illegal aliens coming in, and the crime associated with it. Yeah. And I know we're going to talk in depth about the, the exceptional briefing we got by the both two sheriffs, mm -hmm. Kenny County and Valverde County Sheriffs, firsthand what it, they're seeing on a daily basis and the challenges they have. Yeah. And I want to remind everybody, <clears throat> while I'm thinking about it, this is not a Texas problem. It's not an Arizona problem. It's not a New Mexico problem. It's not a California problem. It's not a border state problem. This is, a, this is an American problem, uh, what we're seeing, because 
uh, it's it's coming to to a city near you. Um, it's coming to your city, and it's going to be very very serious. Uh, it's always good to be able to put names, faces, stories with the stats and the numbers. We hear about the numbers, and it's just white noise. It just bzz, just kind of goes in one ear and out the other ear. But we saw it firsthand. We in in it was amazing um, on multiple levels. Amazing in a scary way. Um, but also amazing to see the resilience of the resilient nature of some of these Texans that live down here and deal with this on a day day to day basis. We're going to tell their story. We're going to talk about it a little bit. We actually just got back in. You can see the bags under our eyes. Al's asleep right now over at the bar. I mean, he he's Al sitting at the pub right now, just being like, "What's up? What's up?" Allison uh, threw on a coat of paint, put a hat on. You look all patriotic. And uh, but we got in this morning. We had to. We were up at four a.m. And so technically, we just came back from Mexico, and uh, we we're jet lagged <laughs> a little bit, just a little, little bit. bit. We never crossed time zones. Hey guys, you ever go out to a barbecue joint and the next day you're still digesting all that meat? Uh, you know, you know that feeling, right? Trust me, I've been down on the border. That's all I've eaten is meat over the last three days. Uh, here's a tip for that: drink red wine. Not only does it taste great, but red wine actually makes you digest meat more effectively. In fact, according to some studies, it even makes red meat healthier. But not all wines are equal. You don't want some mass-marketed wine full of chemicals and pesticides. Instead, you need to check out Extreme Altitude Malbec from Argentina. Extreme Altitude means grapes grown at around 9,000 feet, fed off of pure snow melt, no excess chemicals, with notes of blackberry, leather, smoke, dark cherry. And uh, my friends over at CowboyWines.com just got one more shipment in, and they got that wine waiting for you. They got it from uh, one of the third highest vineyards in the world. Our audience can get 50% off if you go there today. Just go to CowboyWines.com. That's CowboyWines.com. Ooh, it's delicious. And we'll be right back. So we flew in here today, and uh, I kicked my boots off and threw some threw my "Hey dudes" on on the. Yeah, I'm still wearing the pants I was wearing. I'm falling apart, Al. Huh. We all are, dude. You tired? <laughs> yeah. You sleep on the plane this morning? Oh, hey, hit hit his mute button on the microphone over there. You go, make sure you guys are unmuted over there. We like to do things without instructions around here. I don't know if you were telling Gallon me. back of me kept kicking and banging the back of my seat. So Don't you love that? No, I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I snoozed on the plane. <laughs> and uh but there was something, you know, you gotta wear the mask on the plane, right? I'm so sick of that. And I was wearing Allison handed me a mask and I don't know what laundry detergent you use on these masks. I couldn't wear it. It was like, uh, it just it was too too rosy fresh. Oh, sorry, uh, it, was clean. it was very i was like <laughs> what did you put in doc did you spray l lotion in this thing what if is you think i'm home long enough to do my own laundry we'll have to take <laughs> it up with the kids yeah well anyway big shout out to uh, uh johnny allen and, and laura and in the you know the folks that just put, took care of us down there we stayed at a ranch in valverde county uh down in del rio and del rio has what 110 miles of border they they have it was roughly 100 miles a little more than 100 miles of a uh, border with mexico 3200 square feet 3200 square, square miles, miles. Sorry. yeah and it's it's amazing when you get down into that part of texas and you see how vast everything is right to me it's one of the most beautiful parts of the state you get down there it's rough it's rugged like everything out there can kill you Everything out there can kill you. I was out there. We were taking some pictures the other day. I was wearing flip-flops, and I'm standing out there in the yard, and I thought I got snake bit. I looked down. It was just a stick. I mean, it, it, yeah. I, I was like, I'm bleeding. Yeah. I'm going to be bleeding here. I mean, everything in that part of the country can kill you. Um, and we were down there at their ranch. Beautiful place. Game ranch. Um, borders on Lake Amistad. Gorgeous vantage point. I think they've got mm, sixteen thousand acres down there, which I mean, that's a huge chunk of land, which is not unusual in that part of the country. I mean, everything is ranches, everything. That's all there is. And uh, you go down there, you can look across the lake from their place, and it's Mexico. And uh, I can remember, <laughs> I can remember in my younger days, 
going down there and going across, mm -hmm. going into Mexico. It's a great time, you know, a little cultural exchange. It was a lot of fun. Good times. Go, good place to go have a little tequila and drink some beer with some good folks down there. Not anymore. No. It's not the way it is anymore. I was talking to Johnny, who's a former Texas Ranger, and I asked him last night at dinner, I said, do you ever go, do you ever go across? And he goes, hell no. Mm -mm. And, I mean, here's a guy who's lived down there his entire life. That ranch has been in his family since 1920s. And uh, he's like, I don't, I, he goes, he goes, he had to think about it. He goes, I think the last time I was across the border was 2007 or 2008. He said, you just don't go. He said, used to be you could go to Acuna and it, you, you know, it was okay. Yeah. He said it was a safe place, oh, yeah. pretty good place to go. And he said, even now it's one of the better places if you're going to go. But he said, mm, mm It's changing. Yeah, it's changing. So someone, I, I posted a picture of our team of people that were down there and the group that was working with us. And, and they were so gracious and opened up so many doors for us to, to really get boots on the ground into some of these hot spots that were there. and. Um, uh, I posted a picture of us on Facebook this morning. And, of course, you get the things, well, true Christians would be down there with food and water and medical supplies and, you know, clothing and all of this stuff. Uh, well, we'll deal with your true Christian perspective here in a minute. Um, the, uh, I, I want you guys to take a look. Will you play that full, put, show up that first full screen too? Uh, so this is, we had we did a lunch yesterday. Uh, we had, I don't know, what would you say, 30 people showed up, 30, 40 people showed up there at a, uh, Rudy's Barbecue in Del Rio, which, trust me, it, for, a, for a couple days to plan an event and get 30, 40 people out, uh, that's way better than Joe Biden could do uh, <laughs> at, a, at a rally. And one of the ladies that was there, she was there with her uh, two beautiful daughters, teenage daughters, and... Um, this was a this was a this was their property. It's uh that's a game feeder there, right? It's that's and so that's uh you can see them, they're just out there, they're on her property. They have no business being on her property. Um you, you, so here's the thing. Everybody who wants that, well, we just gotta open the doors and just welcome everybody in. Show that show that picture one more time, Kelly. You wouldn't just open your door to strangers and say, here, just be here. When Strangers she called from, for help and backup or support, her the answer she got was, we're overwhelmed, we can't help you. Get guns, get dogs. Amazing. That's Strangers it. from 83 different countries. Yeah, we met with the sheriff uh, of Valverde County, and he gave us two hours of his time. I didn't know where, he's a Democrat. He's a, he's a Democrat. Um, holds office as a Democrat. And... Uh, he said there were 83 different countries. Now, I don't know if you guys understand the geography of Central America and South America, but there ain't 83 countries down there, all right? There are people coming across, and that is just in, that is just in Valverde County, that 100-mile stretch, that 120-mile, 110-mile stretch. There's people from Oman, people from Yemen, people from Pakistan, there are people from, uh, you name it, Uganda. Middle Eastern country, Uganda, Ugongo. Sudanese. There's, I mean, it's Rwanda. I mean, Venezuela. there's people coming across. Um, there, there's not anybody from France. There's not anybody from the UK. There's not anybody from Switzerland. Not anybody from, you know, those kind of, these, are, these are bad elements that are coming in here. And what they do is they will fly them in uh, to south america or central american countries and then they'll bust them a little bit and then they'll put them on another plane maybe they come into mexico city but they work their way up and then they fly up to the border and boom they come across and um they are apprehending 1100 just in valverde county they're apprehending 1100 illegal aliens a day that's insanity so between dps department of public safety border patrol and the you know, county sheriffs, 1,100 on that 100 a day. That's a lot. Show, uh, skip down to uh, uh, full screen six. Okay, hey, there you go. So that is, a, that, is a, uh, that is a game camera in the middle of the night. Here they are coming across. Uh, this is in the state of Texas. This is in Kenny County. 
Kenny County is just east of Val Verde. We went over there. We spoke with the sheriff there as well. They have uh, how many miles? 16. They, how much was it? 16 miles of border. 16 miles of border. Um, and and they're, in, they're in a major dilemma as well because it's, you know, it's a hot spot of coming across because the people can come in there and they can go, <clears throat> they can go um, right over to the rail yard. They come in, they go east, they go to the rail yard, they hit the highways, boom, and they're just they're in San the Antonio. Country. Yeah, they it takes them jump on a train, boom, they're gone, and uh, it's a bad it's a bad situation. Now, what they're saying is, and people who want to say, um, they say, well, this this is not an open border. You know, the Biden administration, this is not an open border. It's a closed border. Well, transactionally, yes, it's closed. Transactionally, the people who should be coming across, I mean, uh, the sheriff in Val Verde County said that, he said that uh, on any given weekend, you'd have 100,000 people that would come into Val Verde County because they would grow, their population would grow from 50,000 to 100,000 because people come across the border to shop and to do business. They're supposed to come. And then they go back home. They've closed the border to those folks. The problem is... They're legal, by the way. They have visas to come over. They're, they're, they're legal. So it's, it's hurt the economy in that way, but it's also hurt those people. So yeah, it's closed to the legal people that should be coming, and, and it's, but it's wide open to illegal crossings. And there's folks who would say, well, you know, surely there's, there's fences, there's walls, there's gates, there's... Border Patrol that's stopping them. It, 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 I'm telling you, folks, it ain't happening. It's not happening. Uh, it, 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 they're with open arms. Border Patrol at this stage in the game is acting like an Uber driver to get them to a processing center. And from there, they're in the country. They're gone. Uh, play, let me just show you. Let me just show you how open it is. This is a video that I shot while I was down there. Uh, play SOT number four please so down here on the southern border Val Verde County and I'm going to show you guys how easy it is for illegals to cross into the United States of America you would think there would be border security and a big wall and all these things I want to show you the fence there's your fence right there left the gate open to America right there there it is the Rio Grande River. You can see some boys over here on the opposite side. If I could zoom in, I could. I'll flip it around in a minute and show you another video. Right there. That is the nation of Mexico. And they come straight across the river, right from the zigzag, right here. Open borders. Tell me we have a closed border. Tell me we have a closed border. We have a welcome sign. And the Biden administration doesn't care. This is what the Biden administration wants. Right there, that easy. It's some serious stuff. It's an untenable future. We've got to get control of this. So people would watch that and be like, well, where are they? Why aren't, I mean, they, they were right on the other side of the bank right yeah. there. They knew we were there. As we were walking away from that, you said... You said what? They they know exactly who was. Oh, they 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 spotted us. They knew what we were wearing. This is the cart the cartels on the Mexican side. They've already known. We got a guy in a cowboy hat. We got a lady in a blue uh, dress. dress. Yeah. They knew, uh, and they knew we weren't reporters or media because they, you know we don't look like that. Mm -hmm. And so they're probably wondering who who are they and what are they doing here. Yeah. But they were looking at us. Yeah. Al, what did you think when you saw that? I, I was just blown away. I was just blown away in how the, um, uh, just the you know, proximity, which of course we knew, but how it, there was just nothing, just, just no, no type of, uh, of, of uh, barrier or any type of, of uh, resistance that, that keeps people from just walking over. You see the gate wide open. You see the DPS troopers that are that are stationed there, that then reported to us about the seven Venezuelans the night before. Yep. Um, and uh, they come on over as the troopers had uh, described and said, 
well, they come on over and they sit here until we come on on duty. And uh, then when uh, we come on duty, we call Border Patrol and Border Patrol comes and picks them up and brings them over to processing. And they strip down naked right over here and uh, change their clothes. And some of them are all dressed up with nice nice, uh, nice clothes and jewelry and so on and so forth. And, uh, and uh, how they uh, explain that these, these people aren't refugees. They're, they just want to get in here. And yeah. they found the easy way in. They found the open door. They found the open door. And it's every night. It's every night. That's just one spot. That's just one spot. And in, in Valverde County, they have, they have a wall. They have two miles of wall. Out of 120 miles of borderland, they have two miles of wall, and it's, it's on each side of the gate, the official gate that where the port of entry is, right. the point of entry is. Uh, that's all they have. And so you're like, oh, there's barriers down there. There's not. Uh, that's what you see. We saw it in numerous places. More to get into. Hey, uh, stress can have a horrible impact on your health, and I know a lot of you are stressed out about the state of our country. I just showed you a video that should stress you out. This is one of the many reasons I take Field of Greens every day. Field of Greens is unlike any other superfood because it uses real USDA organic fruits and vegetables packed with antioxidants. It can support heart health, metabolism, blood pressure, and digestion, plus it is pre- and probiotic. Great for everyone in your family, old, young, your athletes, and unlike other nutritional drinks which rely on only one vegetable, Field of Greens is packed with 18 clinically researched essential fruits and vegetables. Super simple to take, available in regular flavor, wild berry, and now lemon lime. I want you to go to BrickHouseChad.com. You can get 15% off your first order with promo code CHAD, I spell it, Chad, at checkout. That's BrickHouseChad.com. This is the easiest and fastest way to start living a healthier life. Available in original wild berry and now lemon lime, BrickHouseChad.com. That's BrickHouseChad.com. Use promo code CHAD. We'll be right back. All right. Um, I want. I want just flash up real quick. Show um, that full screen there, uh, number three. If you look at this image right here, uh, go to that's uh, that's number four. Do number three, right there. That's beautiful country right there. Now that's looking out across towards uh, the the lake there from the ranch where we were staying. Uh, with our good friends down there, and we saw what four or five boats. That a were, lot of activity. A lot of activity on the water. Now the border patrol doesn't have boats on the water. They pulled all of them off. They they pulled us the patrols and the land patrol on that that where you're looking at that picture that there was a spot that they were there on a fixed position on X, one there and one towards the the highway, and they the sector chief for some reason said. Well, if we pull the boat, then we don't need the inland agents either because guess where they have to be? Processing the family units that are coming in. So there's absolutely no enforcement, no law enforcement presence right there right now. So we sat out there and we watched from that perspective. That's where That was the Border Patrol X right there where they had uh, a, an inland, basically a spot, an HQ right there on that land. We watched the boats come across towards a, an area of flats over there uh, they were they were dropping something. We don't know what it was. We don't need we needed binoculars to really zoom in on that. But it was either people or drugs. And and that area, Chad, is is mostly known for drugs. Drugs. Because exactly we right. we were north in the county. Uh, it's not like the other pictures where we showed by the river where they're bringing the people. This is the the place where if in fact there are people, they're the ones that do not want to get caught. Yeah. And uh, I'll take the opportunity to mention what the sheriff uh, shared with us. Because I had been there a few weeks prior, over a little month, and I wanted to see what was the big change in the last month, over a month, and it's only gotten worse. And those, what's gotten worse are the human smuggling chases mm-hmm. of all these individuals because you have over 500 state police surrounding that area. That is an incredible number of uh, not only Texas troopers, uh, Florida, Ohio, Nebraska, I think we saw one from Ohio, right? Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, they're saturating the area, which means that they're detecting the loads. Yeah. The humans come in, the ones that didn't get detected by, by they're not turning themselves into Portal Patrol, and 
troopers detect them, want to pull them over. They fail to yield. They get in these horrific crashes. We've seen the bodies on several uh, accidents where they, they crash and, and die and because they don't want to turn themselves in. Why? Because they have criminal histories. Yep. They're tied to the cartel. They're prior deports. Uh, I think he just shared here that the, the number of sex offenders that have been prior uh, convicted illegal aliens deported and are coming back is up 300%. Yeah. It is incredible the number of uh, people that are coming over with criminal histories. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing. That's what he's seeing there. And we want to make sure this is, to people understand this is just Val Verde County. Just Val we're not Verde even County. talking down in McAllen area. Yeah. And the cartels are making $25 million a week just in this area. Just in Val Verde County. And that's the biggest shift that, that I was very surprised because just a few weeks ago, the other side that you mentioned, Acuna, has always been, had always been like a neutral area for the cartels. Not anymore. The mm -hmm. violence has shown up on that side. The cartels are fighting for that plaza because they want part of that money. And, of course, the cartel calling card is when they execute somebody, they hang their bodies. And, and there was I saw numerous pictures from right across that spot right there where the bodies are hanging in the middle of the city. It's the cartel calling card to, to show that they've been there, that, that their form of justice has been carried out. But when you talk about um, you, you, to kind of put a perspective on it, so that ranch has a public access road that runs right through it and goes all the way down to the lake what? to well, the boat lamp. Boat well, ranch. it's not it's not considered a public access, but the ranch owner allows them allows to it. them to to go down there and access the ramp. But people want to go to the lake and, and the river. Yeah. And remember, they told us that the cartels have already uh, ushered those people out there and, and moved them away. There, people are entertaining on, on jet skis or fishing, but it's interrupting the cartels everyday activities. Yeah. And the cartels armed cartels from Mexico get on the river and have moved the U.S. citizens out of the way. Yeah. saying you can't be here. Yeah, it's, and just the day before, uh, there was a group of fishermen on a boat, and the cartels came and ran them off. Yes. Said, you can't be here, got to gotta go. Um, and then that night, that first night we were there, we're sitting there, it's, it's dark, it's probably, what, 10 o'clock at night? Mm -hmm. And we see down into that, down there where the lake is, we see what appears to be headlights. Yeah, absolutely. And what happens? Well, the, the ranch owner and I headed down there to try to spot them, because she had, she had just mentioned that to, to us, uh, that she had seen that uh, over the July 4th weekend. And you could clearly see the lights and eventually see the brake lights of the vehicle. And this is right by the water. They're doing something. They're dropping, in, in my experience, they're dropping off loads of drugs. And it's not just marijuana anymore. It's the fentanyl, the methamphetamine. And we head and rush over there to try to find them. But as soon as we get that way, they turn off the lights. And we had spotlights trying to find them. She had even called Border Patrol on that prior occasion. Border Patrol couldn't find them, even with their infrared and thermal uh, cameras. As soon as we head back to the head house of the ranch, the lights come back on. The movement happens again until we can't see them, get on the river, and then head back into Mexico. Yeah. It's amazing. And then, you know, Johnny, the former Texas Ranger who owns the ranch, has been in his family since the 20s. He was telling me a story about, he says, you said, you know, you sit out there at the ranch, you see cars come through there. You start kind of realizing who's supposed to be there, who's not supposed to be there. He said a red car comes through there. He said the guy turns his head so you can't be see him. And he's down there for, you know, 30 minutes, comes back out, turns his head again. He's like, you just know that he's up to no good. He said, I jumped in my truck, followed him, called authorities. They pulled him over 300 pounds of drugs, 300 pounds of dope mm -hmm. uh, in the car. He'd gone down to the lake and picked it up. Uh, this this stuff is is just pure insanity, man. And this is this is just in Val Verde County. I can't stress this enough. And and when the sheriff told us again, who's a Democrat? When the sheriff started spouting off the numbers and the percentages, it was insane the increase that they're seeing just you know month to month. It's it's going through there. And this is actually the slow season for people coming across because it's hot. Right. Right. So I mean it, it'll it'll kind of curtail a little bit. But I want you to play. Um, Bum, 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 bum. Play uh, uh, SOT number, I'll play SOT number three. So I want to show you what happens. The, uh, the illegals come across the river. They're carrying their possessions. They've been walking, they've been traveling, and they take their, uh, their dry clothes and the belongings that they're going to keep, they keep them in a plastic bag. The plastic bag keeps everything dry as they come across the river. When they get over here, they start changing clothes. They'll wait for the troopers, they'll wait for uh, sheriff's 
the deputies they'll wait for border patrol to come and pick them up they will they'll undress right here and they will leave everything that they used on the trip right here and you can see there's toothpaste bottles of water there's clothing there's uh, nike shoes uh, they just they just everything for the river crossing is right there and they'll do it and you can go down this fence line right here you see it over and over again. It's stationed throughout. See the garbage bags full of their possessions that they've left behind. And then basically, the, uh, the authorities act as their Uber driver. They take them to Border Patrol. The Border Patrol processes them. And they're in the country. Allison, what do you think? It's overwhelming. Yeah. You know, I think that one thing that kept hitting me was there's so much empathy in that area from the Texas understand legal immigration and the need for that aspect but just you know a frustration with the fact that they're just being overrun they can't let their kids outside to play right they're coming home to find 18 illegal immigrants hanging out in their garage drinking their beer yeah yeah there's ranch owners who said that you know you go out to a deer blind somewhere and you open it up and there's 10 of them inside sleeping uh, um yeah one ranch owner uh provided an, and I, i'm sorry i didn't get you the picture but it's a picture of the their own polaris stolen full of illegal aliens and they're driving it to get through their own ranch wow and uh and i want to share a little bit more of the stats with the what the sheriff uh, provided the all this is increased in that area assaults on border patrol agents uh drownings they've had nine drownings they've had uh the vehicle chases that we talked about nine vehicle accidents and this is in the last month this is in the last month last five weeks increased in local crime the burglaries of these ranches going into the uh the the sheds burglarizing um one ranch owner uh told me that they go and defecate and urinate all over the place and make a mess out yeah. of the their houses and then they leave uh and even if they when they encounter them they don't care they know that if border patrol is going to pick them up eventually release them yeah and i saw numerous pictures people were showing me their property that that had been ransacked i mean just ransacked um just torn apart uh, by this and so again remember I mean you good Christians out there need to be down there feeding everybody and clothing everybody and making sure that everybody feels the love of the Lord down there uh, these folks these folks are this is an invasion what we're seeing and uh, and everybody down there is living that reality they're facing it and it's just it's it, you say well what's the solution well I could tell you what some folks are doing down there and we're going to do that in the next segment hang tight we'll be right back the uh you say well we're you know greg abbott said he's going to build a wall right in, in the state of texas he said he's going to finish the wall uh, and I remind everybody, you can't build a wall everywhere across the southern border. Uh, you know, you take Texas geography, some of it's a natural, like that area where we're at, that ranch, you, you, you can't build a wall along that reservoir right there. It's just not, that's a natural barrier, barrier that lake, okay? Um, th but there's certain areas you can't, you just can't do it. Um, I want you to play, uh, I want you to play number four, SOT number four real quick. So down here on southern border wait not that we already played that one and i'm gonna show you guys you can cut that one sorry about that that was my fault um play play um do, 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 do. play number two that's the one i wanted i just want to show you guys real quick uh the federal government here's their here's the wall yeah. come down here and just drop off chain link fence they got rows and rows of chain link fence that's the biden wall that's what the biden wall is going to look like is uh some chain link fence there see that rows and rows yeah, that's not going to stop anything. Absolutely not going to stop anything. Uh, this is a dangerous area. There's a lot going on, and uh, there's no way that this is either under control or in any way, shape, or form. Is there is there a way that this is going to get under control anytime soon? Um, I met with the sheriff of Alberta County for two hours, and uh, he's a Democrat. Uh, he admitted that he didn't like the last administration, but he admitted that the last administration had the border under control. There, were, there was security here. He said this secure, this uh, administration, completely insecure. Um, it's, uh, 
It's an absolute nightmare, folks. It's an untenable future, not just for Texas, but for the rest of America. Uh, something's got to be done. All right, pop up uh, real quick, um, full screen four. This is the detention center here. Um, this is where we met with the sheriff there, Valverde County, Sheriff Martinez. Uh, and right across from there, they, they put up a, a tent. They put it up in like a day or two. This, this, that's the solution that the state has is putting these tents up in these places and they're processing centers. They're bringing them down there. They can process people through there. These detention centers are not on, they're full. Now remember, you got Americans that are committing crime that's right. that need to be detained. They, they can't detain people because they're so full with illegals. And you talked about the, the, the female detention uh, center it has what, 31 beds? But there was only holding uh, 10. It was holding eight. Eight. eight they, women. And they couldn't put any more in there because they tested positive for COVID. That's right. So that's eliminated um, in quarantine. And uh, 1,100, 1,100 a day. What are you going to do with them? I was talking with one guy uh, at, at our event yesterday. He runs an ambulance service down there. They had a wreck. The, the driver, the coyote, the people inside flipped the car over. People were injured. Ambulance comes. Coyote's in the ambulance. They start heading towards San Antonio. He's like, let me out. Well, that's all they can do is let him out. And so there's a coyote who's running humans across the border. They turn him loose right mm -hmm. there on the interstate. What does he do? He heads back for another load. Another load. Uh, these are the kind of things that people don't understand. I mean, this, this is the reality of it, the desperation of it. You know, Sheriff Martinez was talking about, uh, he said, you know, I get up every day. I love my community. He served his community for a long, long time. Uh, he's got to protect his community. He wants Border Patrol to be able to do their job so he can do his job. And you had, you know, you were, you were saying, what would happen if Border Patrol just stood at that river and said, no, you're not coming in. You're not coming in. Turn around and go back the other way. I want, I want to see a show of solidarity between Border Patrol, state police, the sheriffs of yeah. all these counties get together. And no matter what the Biden administration is saying at this point, because this is the protection of our sovereignty and a public safety and a national security issue. One day I want them to get together, stand on the line. And instead of allowing these people to come in and extending the hand to bring them up, I want them to say, not today. Armed National Guard, by the way, a National Guard, we saw them too. They're down there. But they're there more in a passive role. Right. I want them in an enfor enforcement role with the capacity to detain people. But I don't really want to try to detain them. I want them to be stopped at the line. What would happen? I want them to do it one day, come together and stand on the line. And, and what would that, that coyote that's coming across in that raft going to do with yeah. the people? Say, uh-uh, you're not coming anymore. That message is going to be sent like a wildfire immediately to the cartels and everyone hey they didn't let these people in one day let's see what happens yeah because right there in that county if the if the cartels are making 25 million dollars a week that's a hell of a week that's going to reverberate what do you mean my, my load didn't get through what do you mean it didn't get through but you know what's going to happen the bureaucracy is going to hear about it here in the, in, in washington and the phone's going to be ringing off the hook why the hell did you you, you they they just did their job they wouldn't be breaking any law whatsoever other than just uh uh, follow law that has legislatively been passed yeah. a long time ago, and it's called immigration federal law. That's yeah. all. And the sheriff, he said, not going to happen. It's no. not going to happen. Now, we met with the sheriff and, and the uh, county attorney in uh, Kenny County, just east of there. They're at a point now where they have gone after uh, DPS and said, and, and Governor Abbott has said, we have everything you need. We've got you know, we got dogs, we got humans, we got equipment, we got everything you need, and and but it's not there. It's not there. Greg Abbott has said we here DPS has all of these things, but it's not there. So they're giving the state one more opportunity to to um, do what they're saying they're going to do, and if not, they're going to hire private contractors, private security contractors, the same folks that 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 we use in the Middle East. These contractors over there. They're going to hire them to protect their county. They're going to put up the technology. They're going to put up the cameras down by their 16 miles because they're, they're taking it into their own hands because no one else is doing it for right. them. And so that's what they talked about. So they, they'll put up the post. They'll put up the detection uh, technology, which these private security companies have. And they're going to start detaining people down there. Yeah. Uh, and, and I want to talk a little bit about the logistical nightmare 
of this, uh, you know, Governor Abbott saying that he's going to arrest people for criminal trespass. Easier said than done, right? Uh, yeah. We heard this oh, oh, six weeks ago when he declared it, the first time he said it. And now it's a ripple effect into the processing center that you said that's been built. Uh, it's going to open sometime next week. Um, it's going to be only to process these individuals that they're predicting 200 a day. I think it's going to be more than that. Yeah. And then they're going to take them to Dilly, Texas, which is three and a half hour drive from there. And they're going to do Zoom calls. They're going to be charged with an aggravated criminal assault, uh, criminal trespass into the state of Texas. And these people are going to be arrested. The sheriff thinks it's going to last and it's be good enough for capacity to do it for 10 days. 10 days. If it's at 200 a day. And then it's going to be over. Where are you going to put the rest of the people? You right. mentioned 1,100 a day. And that's, again, just this area alone. Not even counting Kenny County. Yeah. And they're all going to bring them there. They're going to process them there. And what does that do? Now we need more, just, more judges, more magistrates, more defense counsels, more. We have to provide them with all these legal remedies. And uh, justice of the pieces are going to have to pick up the slack. They're looking for volunteers to come and help uh, staff, to staff even the processing center that doesn't have anybody there. Yeah. They can't get any personnel to, to help them. Yeah. It is a logistical nightmare. Just nightmare. To, yeah. and, and this is taxpayer dollars. This is, this is you know, resources that could be aiding American citizens, but it's, it's going into this situation. Um, it's insanity. And I've asked numerous people down there, I said, you know, do you feel like you're at home anymore? These are people who've had ranches in their families since the 1800s. And they're like, this doesn't feel like home. doesn't feel like home anymore. Um, you go to Del Rio, it's not a big town, not a big place. And you say, well, not much has changed if you look around. Uh, maybe they've added a new store or a new restaurant here or there. But they say culturally it's changed completely. And I saw video after video of uh, numerous arrests and chases right through the middle of town in, in there. And just takedowns. And it's, it's just so much. I mean, over and over again. One more thing I want to show you when we come back. Y'all hang tight. Uh, real quick, will you play uh, number one, the VO for the, of the border wall there? I want you guys to see real quick um, this shot. So this is, I took some video. This is, there's a shoe just sitting over there, right? Oh, what are you going to do with your shoe? You can't go get your shoe because there's a border wall. Look at that. Hey, it's a border wall. It's, it's, it's keeping people out. That's fantastic. Let's just walk down here to the end. Oh, well, there's the end of the border wall right there. And there's a little piece of barbed wire. Uh, you just walk around it. There you go. There it is. That's Mexico, folks, uh, right there. Um, you just head right on down to the river. So this is the kind of thing. Now, you take that. That's Valverde County. You take that and you multiply the problem that they have in that county by 20 counties across the border, of, southern border of Texas. 20 counties. Uh, 1,254 miles of, of border between Texas and Mexico. And you got DPS. You got... Uh, you got various law agencies, you got ICE, you got Border Patrol, and, and it's all disjointed. It, you, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing, and basically neither one cares. Uh, it's, it's complete chaos down here with this, with this thing that's going on, folks. And, and I'm telling you, something's got to be done. We've got to hold this administration's feet to the fire. We've got to take matters into our own hands in many cases, like we're talking about in Kenny County. These are the kind of things that have got to happen. Um, it's going to take hard, hard work. We're losing our country losing our country we if you don't have a border if you don't have border security you do not have a nation period and uh, i repeat you know the sheriff there in valverde county he said i didn't like the last administration but they did a good job the trump administration didn't like them they did a good job more to come folks in upcoming episodes wish we could get into more today we love you see you tomorrow night god bless you bye <laughs>